So some of us here know the unique history of community development Queensland and they knew Les Halliwell personally. Others like myself only know a little of the story. So I've spent the last couple of weeks chatting to some of his colleagues, the people that knew him, and also talking to the UQ archive team just to try and piece some pieces together. Because that's how stories are created. We cobble together from a creative mix, bits of memory, reassembled bits and pieces. We recycle them in a present storytelling and then we turn them loose for future use. And from the bits that I've cobbled together, I can tell you that Leslie Marsden Halliwell was born the 20th of September 1908. Now I know nothing about his childhood, but I do know that that means he was a seven-year-old boy when World War I broke out. He would have been a young man of 22 when the Great Depression hit, trying to make his way in the world. And he would have been in his 30s during World War II. And I only have to look at my own family elders to know the impact of those events on a young man's life. In the five years between 1948 and 1953, Les Halliwell achieved three qualifications from Melbourne University. And by 1967, he also had a Master of Social Studies from UQ. So from that, I think it's safe to say that he wasn't afraid of hard work. We can assume he was disciplined and had a thirst for learning. Before his appointment at UQ, he was a social worker at a children's home in Ballarat, Victoria and he was appointed as a social worker lecturer status at UQ's remedial centre in 1958. By 1970, he was sub-dean of the Faculty of Education and acting head of the Department of Social Studies. And following a year's study leave in the UK, he was reappointed annually as a senior lecturer through the middle of 1976, when his appointment expired. So I'm suddenly feeling great affinity with Mr Halliwell as he came to academia after a life in the community sector, and the fact that he lived with the impermanence of contracts for most of his time, as the majority of academics and indeed most community workers do. But what makes Les Halliwell so important to us is that he was the first person to be appointed to a specialty position in community development in Queensland, and his interest was in building community organisations. He is responsible for so many of the organisations that are here today, often in new forms, but they have their roots with his work. Organisations like QCOS, Relationships Australia and Anala Community House, just to name a few. One of the reasons we celebrate his work is that he had an unashamed local community focus. He focused on regional Queensland, places like Rockhampton, Mackay, the Gold Coast, Anala and of course Logan, where we're meeting now. I've been told that he was complex, that he had a sharp mind and at times an equally sharp tongue, that he could be straight with people, tough and even brutal. But most of all, he was gentle and admirable and had a profound capacity to listen and trust. And it's through his legacy of placing the importance of, sorry, of the importance of placing faith in the people we're working with that we've learned. And if Les Halliwell's legacy was an inward and local gaze, then the gift of Sugata Duskopta who followed him was to help us lift our gaze outwards. The 21-month emergency in India declared by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had closed down Sagata's institute and put its chair, Narayan, in prison. And as a, place, as a person placed on the second enemy list, Professor Disgupta opted for discretion over meaningless sacrifice and decided to wait out the crisis abroad. Among his references was a personal letter of recommendation from Paolo Ferrere, which apparently went down quite well with the UQ recruitment team. <laughs> and he was appointed to the University of Queensland in 1976, returning to India after the lifting of the emergency in 1979. It was Sagata Disgupta who established the two yearly community development conference in which we're gathered here today to take part. When I spoke to Tony Kelly about the legacy we've inherited, he summed it up by saying, Les Halliwell built the institutions, Sugata Duskupta consolidated the tradition. But of course, our history doesn't end there. Having been a student of Tony Kelly's, I think I can safely say it's Tony who's been integral to the sharing of this tradition through his rich frameworks. And Tony's beautiful framework of working with head, heart and hands has influenced generations of CD workers. And of course, alongside many others, people like Ingrid Burkett and Peter Westerby have continued to grow and develop this framework, each with their own insightful and poetic writing. <laughs> Ingrid with her engagement in creativity and innovation, and Peter extending thinking on dialogue and soul. 
There are so many teachers in this room and many people we could pay respects to, but I bring attention to these because these have been my teachers, these three people here. Um, they've also been my dear colleagues and friends and I draw on their wisdom within this address and I love that I have the chance to publicly thank them and share my deep appreciation to them. Tony shared with me just Gupta's wisdom that we keep a tradition alive not through our academic achievements but by telling people in stories and sacred moments and it's in this sacred moment that I turn this story loose for future use. <laughs> 